again. But it's your Thanks, birthday. But it's not my birthday. Oh, oh, wasn't it your birthday the birthday. other day? No. Mine's in November. Oh, then Temple Israel got it wrong. I thought I saw a birthday greeting to you from our show. No, it must have been another Robin because I didn't no. get one. So okay, so this is this is the COVID nineteen <laughs> mind I've got. I it want was you Robin Stolson. Uh, so it's Robin uh, Stolson. Okay, Thank there you go. Stolson Johns. Jacob, Thank you. Jacob, Thank you, Jacob. Has, I've lost it, and I'm trying to find it again desperately before Lel joins us. <laughs> Molly. Yeah, we've all been there. We're all doing it. <laughs> I know. I'll, so I'll, this I'll... Time I've reversed words in the same sentence. It was right in my mind, but it came out the wrong way. <laughs> I walked around the house looking for my glasses today and they were on my head. Yeah, Just I've done that. Just yeah, I've done it. I did it. Oh, oh good. So is this the Temple Israel Hilbra ethos that we're talking about? Because we've no, all it's everybody. It. Oh, all right. I thought it was just us. All right. All right. We're live streaming now, so we'll just wait for Leo. <laughs> you know, you're just uh, uh, exercising your prerogative, uh, uh, Reva, of changing your mind in mid-sentence. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Trust my cousin. He has oh, always lovely. the right answer at the right time. Unbelievable. Uh, that's good to have him around. It is. It really is. All right. Here's Lael. Oh, good. She'll be in in a sec. I've seen the beginning. It's still of cold, it. isn't it, Molly? It's ridiculous. It was so hot today, and now it's just gone cold. Hmm. Yeah, and we're going to have a very bad couple of days, but they had it in Australia today, the same thing coming up from the South Pole. It was the coldest August day ever in Sydney. Good God. And oh, August day, the coldest August day. And it was very lovely. Keith put on all sorts of warm clothes to take the dog for a walk. They walked to the fence. The dog did what he had to do and ran back home. <laughs> He wasn't going out in that cold. I was just going to be next Wednesday, Thursday, I believe. Oh. Well, it's the whole week from now is going to deteriorate. Zero and on the Wednesday. There'll be lots of snow around. Maybe not in Joburg, but plenty around. Here's yes, Lael. Hello, everybody. I'm so sorry about that. Not at all. You don't not have given us a conversation. <laughs> you are so accepting of your apology, Lyle. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. All righty. So, where are we? I have no idea. Oh, sorry. Can I introduce us? Right. Yes. Forgive me. No problem. Is <laughs> Temple Israel Hillbrand, Johannesburg, South Africa welcomes you to a yet another amazing lesson by Lael Bethlehem in teaching us how to not understand and read the Hebrew alphabet in our city, but actually to fall in love with it. So over to you, Lael. Thank you very, very much, Reva. And hello, everybody. And lovely to see such a full house tonight. Especially hello, lovely to see Harold. Um, Harold, we're very glad to see you. Uh, we, I, it was lovely that you and I had a chance to speak earlier and um, and uh, looking forward to, to, to your dad being well. So we will give, get better soon because he's a fighter. Yeah. He's a fighter, he's a fighter and we are praying for him and we're very uh, encouraged by the good news. Uh, Harold told me earlier that Peter is going to uh, uh, be released from hospital into rehab. Please, God, on Thursday. That's the plan. So that's that's really wonderful. So lovely to see everybody. All right. So now another apology that I owe you and that I want to make is that I only sent out the uh, voice notes uh, this morning um, for page 46 and 47. 
Um, so that's no good at all because that meant that nobody could uh, could practice with the voice uh, notes with them. So that doesn't help you very much. So again, apologies for that. Um, but I'm, what I'm going to suggest we do is we spend the first uh, 20, uh, 25 minutes on page 46, 47, which yeah. is basically consolidating last week's work. And then we're going to go on to the next chapter because I did review the next chapter this morning. And really what happens in the next chapter is that you learn your last vowel and your last two letters. Uh, and after that, it is only variations uh, that you have to learn. So that's really very exciting. So I'm going to start on page 46. Uh, by the way, I've still got some photocopies of the book. If anybody doesn't have a photocopy and would like one, uh, give me a shout. Um, okay, so I'm going to go on to page 46 and 47, and I'm going to do the usual thing of asking people to volunteer. Um, so we're going to go first through the uh, lines one to six on page 46, which is on the left hand side of my screen. And the first line um, is uh, basically just reminding us about the letter Aleph, uh, a couple of other things, and practicing our new vowel, which is O. Oh, 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 oh. And in this particular line, we only meet the O as it appears um, in its full form. That is to say, the, the vav or the little stick mm -hmm. beneath and the dot on top. Uh, and that's when you say O oh, as in O. Oh, oh. So who will do line one for us under uh, number seven, page 46? It's not such a bad one. Mm -hmm. Volunteer. The thing to, 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 to. But I do the, right, let, let me do the first line, then I'll, <clears throat> I'll ask somebody for the second. Yeah, so, so line one. Et. Remember that, that vowel sound, the mm -hmm. e, the three little dots, et. Et. Ot. Or tot. Or have. And e had. Remember, these are all real words, and they are all mm. words that appear in the prayer book. Et, ot, or tot, or have, and echad. Anybody with any questions about line one? If not line two, who is going to volunteer for us line two? I'll do line two, Leigh. Thank you, Ma. Line two. Ata. Good. Moshe. Good. Now, can you see what happened at Moshe, everybody? Mm -hmm. That dot is playing two roles. It's got two jobs. So yeah, my mom read it correctly. It's playing two roles, that dot. It is the dot that shows you that the shin is a sh. Lord. And it is also yeah. the dot that it's says o. Oh. So in the word Moshe, the yeah. dot at Lord. the top here is has got two jobs. It's o. Oh. And it's also giving us the sh in uh, making up the, the letter shin. Carry on, mom. No de. Good. Mo de. Good. And do she. Do. Um, bottom. Me. Do me. Well done. Well done. Do me. Very well done, mom. Last Thank word you. is do me. Any questions, anybody? Mm -hmm. Dome lach. Exactly. Umi dome lach. Well done, Mom. That's mm -hmm. line two. Who's going to give us line three? I will. I will. Thank you. Was it that Harriet in first? Okay, Harriet can go. No, no, no. I didn't have that. Oh, I'm sorry. Maybe it's I'm also okay. me, but I can go later. Oh, okay. Thank you, Reva. Peter, Peter, that okay. was you. Um, Shabbat. Good. Shabbat. Good. Shabbat. Good. Basha. Shabbat. Good. And Hashabbat. Excellent. Well done. Hundred percent. So variations on the word Shabbat. Lovely. Number four. Reva, would you do line four for us? Okay. Uh, me. Good. Chamocha. Good. Very, very close. Just give me the first letter. 
Kha. Not Kha, but? Oh, it's Kamocha, sorry. That's right, Kamocha. Well done. Right. Um, um, ba ko -he. Excellent, Riva, excellent. Thank God. <laughs> ka dosh. Good. And Hakadosh. We are all reading very nicely. Mi kamocha ba kodesh kadosh ha kadosh. Excellent. Who's going to do line five for us? I don't mind. Thank you, Robin. Line five. Ze. Good. L. Good. Ze. Good. Natata. Good. Vaid. Good. Nata. Good. Baini. Excellent, 100%. Beautiful. And I'm sure you recognize some phrases there. Ze, el, ze, va, amar. Baini, u, vein, bene. So you know what? Can you see, peeps? You are, you are reading the prayer book. That's what you do. Line six, any volunteer for line six? Lawrence will do it. Is that somebody volunteering for line six? Can Lawrence volunteer? Lawrence, yeah. fantastic. Let's hear from you, please. What he, he, she, she, Hamid, Nefesh. Excellent, Lauren. Wow. You're reading beautifully, beautifully, and quick. Hey, yeah, he's a oh, week. Done, Lawrence. Well done. Right. So number seven. What I what I hope you all feel about that exercise is that if you can read that, then honestly, you can you can read just about anything in the prayer book. It is true that you're going to tonight learn another two letters, and then you are still going to learn another vowel. But honestly, you are there. You are there. Okay, so on line um, page, uh, sorry, exercise eight, which is uh, page 47, it's quite a lot of lines. So it starts getting a little bit tedious maybe. Um, so why don't we do it this way? I'll read every second, every second line. How's that? Uh, just to make it a bit, just to speed it up a bit. And then, because I still want to make sure we get enough time for our new letter. So I think I'll start with line one. So have a look at line one. You can see that what's happening with line one is that we are reminding ourselves about the letter P, which is the P. It's a little piggy. And remember, with the dot, it's P. And without the dot, it's the softer F. So in line one, it's all P. Rather, and there's no f, but there's some f in the second line. So line one, piv, piha, po, peyot, hach, po, ne. Any question on line one? Okay, great. Any volunteer for line two? Line two has got a few. Uh, could you just say the first word of the of line one again, please? Piv. Okay. Piv. So you see there, the vav is acting just as a vav. There's no dot on top of it. Thank you. Thank you. So okay. just piv. I'll do line two. Thank you, Dad. Brian, right. let's hear from you. Nafal. Good. Nefe. Uh, what's your last letter there? It's a ta. Nefet. Good. Nefet. Good. No fail. Good. Nefe. Nefesh. Nefesh. Good. Sa. Pat. Safak. 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 Can you see that's a kuf? Yeah, yeah. That's right. 
So the word safak is an interesting word. Um, the word safak is the root of the word enough. Does anyone remember in um, in Hebrew when you want to say like enough already? Like you, you say in Italian, what do they say in Italian? Um, I've forgotten now. Um, but you know, in, in Hebrew, it's also very sort of expressive. When you want to say enough already, what do you say when you say in Hebrew enough? Anyone know? They die, must speak. Must speak. Must speak, Kvar. Enough already. Die, must speak. So must speak is from the root safak, and that means enough. The, the safak to be full, uh, to, to be uh, satisfied, uh, enough. So the word safak is enough. And of course, the word nefesh there that you read uh, so correctly, the nefesh, the soul. Well soul. done, Brian. Line three is reminding us about that lovely new letter, tzadi, from the word tzedaka, tzadik, tzedek. That's the lovely tzadi. And it's also reminding us about the o sound particularly when the O is in its full form, which is the Vav with the dot on top, the whole thing, and not just the dot. So line three. Sok. Sova. Tsadok. Tsadik. And Tsedek. Tsedek, Tsedek, Tirdof. Justice, justice shall you pursue. The last word. Sadik. Sadik, the second last word. Who remembers what the word sadik means? Sadik. Is that the righteous person? A sadik. A righteous person. That's right. A sadik. And the, the, the plural of sadik, sadikim. Mm. Righteous people, the righteous, or the righteous people, sadikim. So, uh, um, now, I'll just give you, just for the interest, because Peter, you've also encouraged us at certain points, let's like do a bit of translation. So this first word, uh, tsok. Um, tsok. So, so the word tsok is a derivative of the word to laugh. Of the word to laugh. Uh, let's chok. Does anybody... Um, does anybody remember why our ancestor Isaac is called Isaac Yitzchak? Yitzchak, she loved. His yes, mother of loved. course. His mother yeah. loved. His mother loved. The angel said, you're going to have a baby. And what did Sarah do? She loved. She loved. Yitzchak. Mm. Mm. Good. Yitzchak, like, like a tzaddik. Yitzchak. Yitzchak. So it's actually got... A chaf, uh, a, um, a chet in the middle of it. But a tzok, yeah, a tzok is a joke. So it's from that same root. Oh. It's chak. It chak is the derivative and tzok is a tzadi. Tzok. Or yeah. Tzok is actually a joke. So it, it, it doesn't have the middle part of the root in, in the word tzok. Tzok, okay. Line four. So line four is making use of this long k, which is the kuf, mm. not the kaf. And it's also making use of the o in its longer form or in its full form. So who would like to try line four? Anybody? Okay. Thank you. Shall I do it now? Please do, Reva. Thank you. All right. So that's the first one is call. Good. And koli. Koli and Koli again. No, look at the second. The last, the sorry, last. sorry, 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 sorry. Kolo. Very Kolo. good. Kola. Kola. Good. Kola. Kolot. Excellent, Reva. So does anybody, do you have any association with the word kol? No. Boy, Anybody? Kol, kol Israel. Oh, oh. That's right. So, oh. so, okay, sorry, it is a bit confusing. So, Kol Israel is actually written with the other cat, it's written with the kaf. And this Kol, which oh. is with the kuf, um, is uh, you remember that phrase, Kol Hanshama? 
And that is Kol uh, Hanshama, the voice of the soul. The Neshama is the soul, the Nefesh, the Neshama. Kol uh, is a voice. So Kol, no. voice. Koli. Okay. Does it change the meaning if it's a, a, a kof or a kaf? Yes, does it does. Change? In this case, it does. So it's kof and a kof means And all. all the others didn't change the meaning. Now this one does. No, it does change the meaning. It just doesn't change the sound. Okay. So call, um, call with a kaf, all. Call with a kuf, voice. So this call means voice. And this is how the sentence is. Voice. Koli, my voice. Kolo, his voice. Kola, her voice. Kolot, voices. Ah, voice. So now you'll learn, if, if we want to go on with Hebrew, you can, you'll be able to learn um, uh, possessive uh, uh, forms of words because they get integrated into the noun. So instead of saying my as a separate, what's it called in English? A preposition. Is it a preposition? Yeah. So instead of having the preposition separately, my, his, her, they are, it is integrated into the word call, koli, kolo, kola, and kolot. Would Good. Call, Let us go on to last. Sorry, can Sorry. I ask a question? Yeah. Would, would, would kolot be our voices or just voices? How would you say our voices? So our voices is kolenu. Oh, yeah, it would be. Kolenu. Of course. Is, okay. is that prayer that we say? Is exactly, I know. Um, exactly yeah, right. I know. Shma Kolenu, you can hear the word Shma means here. Yeah. Uh, Kolenu, our voices. Avinu Malkenu, our father, our king. Shma Kolenu, hear our voices. So you see, now you're not only reading, you are beginning to translate. Isn't that exciting? Can I, can I ask a question? Please do. So this call is the voice and it's a cuff the other cuff and the other call what does that mean it uh, means all 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 a l l all oh all as in oh okay so call Kol haolam, the whole world call israel all of israel oh okay and that's the one with the, the kuf, kuf. with a dot kuf. in the middle okay good so line five i'm going to do and line five is uh, just trying to remind us and kind of confuse us about the dot. Sometimes the dot as an, an or is with the whole form. So it's got the stick underneath it. And sometimes it's just chilling there by itself. So the first word, shoev. The second word, um, they've done something interesting here. They've got, it's exactly the same, but they've just got this shorter form of the vowel. When I say shorter, it's just like a shorthand. It doesn't change the sound. So shoev and shoev. Mm. Exactly the same. Shoev, shoev. Sometimes the stick is missing, but as you see, there's a little bit of space between the first letter and the second, just to allow you to see that that is a vowel. Shoel, Shochev, and Shekel. What's a Shekel? Money. Shoev, Shoev, Shoel, Shochev, and Shekel. All right, so line six. Um, I'll give it a try. Thank you. Toda. Good. And translate for us. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you. You know the word Toda. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Hmm. To. Oh oh. To ha. To. To ho. Good. To ho. Good. To uh, ho. Lad. Good. Uh, cha, cha mid. Good. And cha, ha, cha hot. Ta. 
Tahach. Tahach. Excellent. Well done, Peter. Now I've got a funny question for you, um, Peter. Oh. What is the word? Do you have any association with the word tahat? None. No. If, if I say to you tochas, oh, you know what the word tochas oh, means? No, you yeah. Okay, I'm when you said tochas. Tochas is a bum. Okay, oh. and, and tochas <laughs> is several bums. <laughs> no, so, so tochas <laughs> is the sort of... <laughs> Tochas is the sort of Yiddishified ver version yeah. of the word tachat. Mm. Tachat means under, underneath. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> so your bum is underneath. So the word tochas comes from the word tachat in Hebrew, which means underneath. Okay. There you go. Well done. Well read. Okay, line seven. Line seven is uh, reminding us about the f about the aleph, about the a vowel. I think it's all things we know. Mm -hmm. So line seven, I'll read. A four, a fat, a chol, o chel, va chal. Any questions? I'll do it again. A four, a fat, a chol, Ochel and Vachal. Yes, I've got a question. Yes. That little dot after the silent A, after V, shouldn't it be V? And then there's a little dot there. What's it doing there? Chal, you've left it out. Oh, you're quite right, Ariva. Yes. You're quite right. I apologize. I didn't see it. And it is there. Oh. Well done. So it should be, you tell me what the word should be. Va, va, o, chal. Well done. Uh -huh. You got it, Reva. Well done, and no. thank you for correcting me. No, I, I thought it was a mistake in the book. My cursor was in the way. Va, o, chal. Well done. That's how you know you've really learned something. Anybody know the word o, the second last word? Yeah, breakfast. Food, food. means food. food. Okay. And A4 is where. Exactly, and A4 is where. So there you are. You're beginning to read and translate. Lan. A Sorry. What's A4? A A fat. You know, I think that, um, you know what it is? It's actually a biblical term. It's an effa. It's a, a measurement for flour or dry goods. You know, in the book of Leviticus, there's a lot of information about uh, how you have to have a righteous, you, you, you can't cheat people. If somebody mm. buys a, a measurement of flour from you, yeah. it, must be, um, it must be accurate. Okay. So I think that a fat is a, a measurement, um, a measurement, an effa. Yeah, it was, in last, it was in just this past week's parasha that we read was that. It? Okay. And a hin is a is a measurement for for liquid. So, uh, so it says something like a hin. So it says something like a fat sedek hin sedek. So um, sedek, you know, is righteous, or in this mm. case, it means that it's accurate. So an accurate uh, effa of flour, an accurate hin of oil. Um, it's not a word that you would come across in um, in modern Hebrew. <coughs> Very good. Line eight, we're nearly there. Line eight is reminding us about the b, about the t, about the k. It's reasonably easy. Anybody want to try line eight? I can do it. Thank you, Robin. Baal. Good. Pizza. Good. But sake, good. Be cash, good. Buy it, good. And what's a buy it? Oh. A house. Very good. Well done, Robin. You read beautifully. Okay, yes. line nine. There are several words you are going to recognize here, and I think you should be able to read them. Also, read along with me. Gadol, oh. gaal, dodi. Oh. Doda and kippa. Kippa. 
So kippa is a kippa, a yamoka. Uh, dodi, beloved, my beloved. Dodi, li, you remember that? Uh, doda is actually an auntie. And of course the word gadol, big. All right. I think what we'll do, just because I want to try and get onto the next um, chapter, I think I'm just going to do lines 10 to 12, unless anybody would particularly like to read. If okay. not, let me, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, let me do lines 10 to 12, and then we can move on to chapter uh, 7. So line 10, habet, heavy, hood. Hodia Hine. Line eleven. Zot the Zot Hatora Zot Ze Zacha Hadal Hedek Hodesh. And line twelve, you're going to recognize a lot here. Matza. Motse, Motset, Metzach, and Matza. Any questions? Fantastic. I think everybody has got has got uh, has got all of that, and that means we can go on to lesson seven. Do you see lesson seven there? So lesson seven is a bit funny. We, it's introducing four letters, but the funny thing is, and I'm not quite sure why this hasn't been, I don't know, corrected or something in subsequent versions, but one of these letters you already, two of these letters you already know. Am I right? Mm. Mm. You know the shin <coughs> and you know the tough. Okay, so actually it's two new letters. One is entirely new. It's this one. Right. It looks a bit like a dalad. Do you remember the dalad? Except that whereas the dalad looks a bit like a door, it's got a, a right angle. You remember the dalad has got a right angle. This one is rounded. Can you see that it's rounded? Mm. And because it's rounded, it's a resh. Resh. The resh. And it says r. The second one, you know, it's the shin, Shabbat. Mm. Now, here's a little variation. When the dot is on the left-hand side, it's instead sin. of being a sh, it's a s. Sin. So shin and sin. And the tough you already know. Mm. Resh, shin, sin, tough. Which brings us, in fact, to the end of the Hebrew alphabet, other than what's called the final letters, which are variations that will still learn, but there are no, no further sounds. So first of all, Mazel Tov, you've got to the end of the alphabet. So here are the ones we've already learned. Aleph, Bet, Vet, Gimel, Dalet, He, Vav, Zion, Chet, Tet, Yud, Kaf, Lamed, Mem, Nun, Samech, Ayn, A, Fe, Sadi, Kuf, Shin, which can also be Sin, and Taf. That's the Hebrew alphabet. And if you go to the back of your book, if you've got the book, then you'll see, just look at the alphabet, you've done the whole thing. And if you think about, for example, the Ashray, it starts with Aleph, Ashray, and it ends with Tehillat, Tehillat Adonai. You've been all the way through the Hebrew alphabet. Well done. Here are your vowels that you've learned. A, E, A, 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 E, E, O, and O. Those are your vowels. I've got a question. Peter? There are all these numbers that are applied to these letters. Mm -hmm. I don't know whether it's an appropriate question at this stage to ask, but I don't understand why they've been, why letters got numbers and why they suddenly go from one to like 200 or something. Right. So this is how it works. So Aleph is one. Yeah. Two. 
Bet is two. Vet doesn't get a number. It's considered the same. Gimel is three. Dalit is four. Hey is five. Bav is six. Zion is seven. Chet is eight. Taf is uh, nine. And Yud is ten. Mm. Okay. And then what you start doing is you start putting uh, things together. You start putting letters together. So, um, uh, you, you know, you, you basically just carry on with that. And then you start adding things together. So, for example, the word chai, the word chai is a chet and a yud. 18. So then you say, what number is chet? It's eight. What number is yud? It's ten. 10. So what is the number associated with the word chai? 18. It's 18. Mm. Okay, so that's, uh, that's, that's the basics of how it works. Yeah, but that's the basis of numerology, and it's also, of course, the Hasidim sect. Yeah. That's, yeah. right. that's right. Why, they, why it started, I don't know. But it's just a kind of an abstract way of thinking. Uh, you know, it's just a numerical way of thinking about the alphabet. Sorry, if, so, if I may just quickly, word. if I may just quickly, Lael. Yeah. Uh, the whole world used uh, symbols uh, for counting. They did not have, they didn't have numbers. Didn't Even the Romans them. used one and V and M and X and C. Oh, that's and all a good this. point. It was the Arabs who brought uh, the new, the numbers that we use today. Mm. Four. Fascinating. And, and algebra is actually an Arabic word. It's called al -Gibara, And it's a phenomenal study. Mm. And uh, even the Romans didn't have zero. That's why they couldn't do complicated mathematics. Okay. But anyway, that's, I'll leave you to go and... Uh, Thank, you. That Thank you. Thank you. That's a nice Thank question, you. Peter, and a nice answer um, uh, from Lars. Yes. Lael, the Hebrew word is gematria, isn't it? Gematria, that's right. Gematria. Okay, so now we are we're getting to the end of the alphabet. So what have we got? We've got the rounded one, which is R as in Robin. Robin with a Y. Then we've got the sh we've already learned is the shin. Now we've got a S, which is sin. the sin, when the dot is on the other side. Of course, inevitably, you're going to have a problem sometimes, because now you're going to have that little O dot mm. that's going to appear here <laughs> next to the sin. And it's going to cause all sorts of trouble, um, but it doesn't happen very often. So the main thing to remember is shin here, sin here, the dot is attached to the letter. If the dot is a vowel, then it's a little bit over. Um, and then uh, tough, you've already learned. So resh, shin, sin, and tough. So in fact, it's two new uh, letters that you are learning. Now, of course, you'll remember that you've already got a sa, haven't you? The samech. So you've already got the samech, this letter over here, that already says sa. So now if we just go back in the alphabet and remind ourselves that so you've got the V, which also has another V. You've got the VET and you've got the VAV. You've got the, uh, the CHET, which has also got the CHAF. You've got the CAF, which has also got the KUF. Hmm. And now you, you've got the ALIF, which has also got the iron, same sound. And now you've also got the samech, which has also got the sin. So those are all letters where you, there's the same sound is made by two different letters. Okay. Happily, there are no more. That's it, you're done. So that, those are your new letters. We're gonna practice them now. Uh, I'm sorry, when I photocopied, I messed up this page. What it was, so that those of you who've got it can see it, but it was trying to remind us that the Dalit and the Resh look a little similar, but the Dalit has um, a right angle, yes, uh, whereas the Resh is rounded. So it's got a right angle and it sort of goes across a little bit. So it looks like the, it looks like a door. The Shin and the Sin look uh, very similar, but have a different sound. Uh, the sin and the samech have the same sound, so it's just reminding us of that on that page. I'm sorry I messed that up. Now we are learning our second last vowel. And you may have noticed that so far there isn't any way to say ooh. We've said o, 
but we haven't said oo, which in English would be two o's next to each other. And in Hebrew, there are actually two ways to write oo. Exactly, Riva, I know. There are two ways. The one is you take the same vav, the long suffering vav, that sometimes is its own letter, or if it's got a dot on top, it says o. Now you take the same dot, you put it in its tummy, like here, and it suddenly says ooh. Someone hits you in the tummy with a, a ball, what do you say? Ooh. Okay, so th this vav got hit in the tummy with a ball and it said ooh. But you know Hebrew, it wants to have an alternative. So you don't like to put it that way, there's another way to put it. Here is another way of writing ooh. And that is three little dots in a diagonal line underneath the letter. So oo and oo. Oo, which is when the letter is next to the vowel, so it's the whole vowel, it's the whole long form, but it's in the middle, oo. Or if it's underneath, it can say oo. So in other words, if you had a Zion, you had the Zion and then you had this oo, you would say zoo. And similarly, if you had the Zion and you had the oo underneath it, you would say zoo. So let's get to reading a little bit. I'm gonna read you, I'm gonna read you all three lines just so that you can hear what is happening with these uh, letters and vowels. So line one. Shoo. Two. Zoo. Loo. Roo. Sue. Moo. Coo. And coo. Line two. Same sound, different way of writing it. Boo. Do. Goo. Oo. Two. You, Sue, Sue, whoosh, 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 and then line three. Sorry, I, that, I didn't get that second last one. Whoosh, 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 and push, and no. pook, and pook, push, and pook. pook. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> okay, line three. Boot, rude, pool, hook, move, pose, and loot. So it's the oo sound. And the oo sound takes two forms. It's either the little uh, ball in the tummy of the buff, or it's the three dots at the bottom. Don't be dismayed. You will get used to it very quickly. It's just reminding us, here's the vav, here's the o, here's the u. So the long suffering vav, sometimes it's a letter, sometimes it's an o, sometimes it's an u. Duplication. And, sorry. Duplication. It is really. So now let's see if we can put that into action. So really what you've learned now is you've learned the u and the u. And you've also learned a new letter, which is the R, the resh, and the sin, the s. So I see in this exercise, one, two, three, there's no resh, not that I can notice, and there's no sin. So here we are simply uh, uh, learning, consolidating the U. So who's going to have a go at line one? It's just the U's and the O's. Okay. If, Thank you, Reba. No one else wants. All right. The first one is ooh. The second one is oh. Oh. I said well, oh. The next one is ooh. Good. The next one is over. Good. The next one is shoe. Good. Loo. Good. Shul. Good. 
and and again shul. Well then, Riva, line two. Who's going to give line two a go? It's the oohs and the oars. That's all it is. In fact, it's just I'll do it, Blakey. Dad? Right. Shuv. Good. Umi. Good. Of. Not of, but. Oof. 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 Good. Oof. Good. Uma. Good. Oof. Say again. Ufi. Good. And ut. Excellent. Well done, Dad. Line three is all pretty much the same story, but it's just reminding us that sometimes the vav is a uh, the vav is a vav. Um, what else is it doing that's confusing? Nothing really. Sometimes the vav is actually a vav and not a letter. Who will do line three for us? I'll do it. Thank you, Robin. Havat. Hot. Good. So can you see everybody that Robin was not out fox there? There she saw it's got no dot, so it's a vav. Havat. There it's got a dot, so it's pot. Pot. She got that correctly. Well done, Robs. Put. Good. Uvo. Good. Vavud. Vavud, very good. Vavo. Well done. Vavavum. <laughs> well done, Robin. Okay, so there is a little bit of writing practice. That's nice, nothing that we're going to worry about now. Okay, so we're on to the next page. This is an exercise that you can do if you want in your own time on line three. You're just going to go through and circle any, any letter that is a, a R sound. And obviously, well, there are two. Let's just do it quickly for this line. Not R, no, 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 R. And R. Let's quickly do the, the S sound. So, S. The first one is a? S. 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 Yeah. The second last one. Uh, the, 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 one the, the, the second last one. Sorry? The second Sorry. last one. The second last one. Is second a last one and, and then before that, the, the, the sin. One, two, three, four. The fifth one. On which line? The first one. Um, no, on line S line, the fifth Good. letter. Good. So, yeah. so that one is a sin. Yeah. Now... This one here has been sent to confuse you. It's not a sin. And I won't even tell you what it is now. It's just a Good. variation. So we're not going to confuse ourselves with that. No. We're going to go. What's that? Is that a sin? Is that no, a sin? No. no. It's a sure. no. This one is That's a sin. Yes. Yes. That's right. And this one is a sin. Yeah. That's right. So let's do tis. This one. This one. Yes. Her? Yes. Okay. Yes. And the last one. And, and the last one. And then fur, the first one is a fur. And the second last one. Second, last well one. done, Harold. Well done, Harold. You got it. All right. We, uh, we, let's see which ones are meh. First one, no. Third one. Third the one. Last. Just the third one in this case. Third. Cuff. Okay, Harold, you do it for us. The K, which one says K? I think the first one and the last Good. one. Good, but then there's also this one, not to be forgotten. It's got the cuff with the dot in the middle is also a K. Okay. Oh, and here's one in the middle. Well done, Harold. And then the viz are quite confusing. Is the first one a V? No. No. Uh. Is the second one a V? Yeah. Mm. Yes. Is the third yes. one a V? No. 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 Is no. that a V? Yes. No. No, no, yes. No. It's got a dot. That's not a V. Is that a no. V? Yeah. That's a V. And that's and a V. Hmm. All right. Yes. So that's just a bit of consolidating. Now, now we're not going to do words that sound alike. Um so these are all just rather nice, uh, you know, fun things. 
But now what is very nice is to do uh, lines, uh, to do exercise six, because these are all again, uh, phrases from the prayer book. So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do just cause it's 25 past. I'm just gonna um, anticipate a bit where we're going. So, so uh, exercise six, is all um, phrases from the prayer book, which I hope I'll get a chance to read to you now, but it'll also be part of our homework. So that's page 54. And you should be able to read all of those. Um, and then line, uh, exercise eight on page 55 is again, all real Hebrew words, some from the prayer book and some not. And that is gonna be your homework today to try and read line 55. And this time I'm going to just, I'm not going to leave the room until I've sent you a voice note so that you'll have the voice note. Otherwise I will forget. Um, and that goes on to page 56. I, I think that'll be a little bit too much homework. So we can just do that together next week, but there's nothing new. It's all things that you have already learned. Um, so basically that'll then take us to the end of lesson seven. Um, oh yeah, this is just the learning hints. Uh, on top of the letter o, -O and in the tummy U, -U. Um, So basically what you can see is you've now learned the whole he Hebrew alphabet and its vowels. Hmm. What is left after this is only something called final letters. And that is that certain, uh, there are five letters that when they occur at the end of a word, they take a slightly different form. You can still recognize them, but they don't look quite the same. And we just have to learn that because otherwise you look at the prayer book and you can't figure out what the letter is. Um, but it's not really new and you'll get it quite quickly. And there's one more vowel just to whet your appetite. I'll just tell you this. The last vowel we learn is a silent vowel. Excuse me, a what? Another a, one. A silent vowel, not a silent letter. A silent, a silent vowel. vowel. Like what? the hell is a silent vowel what? and I'll just tell you this the silent vowel so just as the silent letter is there to allow the vowel to, to be spoken so the silent vowel is there to allow a letter just to come across with its sound and without uh, its vowel so I'll just give you an example otherwise you think I'm crazy so let's take the 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 letter l lamet so you can say li, la, lu, lo. But sometimes you just want to say l. Or you sometimes you just want to say m or sh or b or k. In other words, you just want to say the sound of the letter without it being a full vowel like a, e, i, o, and u. So what happens when you just want to say l? If you just want to say la and not la, why you just want to call a silent vowel. Why can't Which you just have the lumbered and say la without a vowel? Without I guess you could. Vowel. You could, but then you're going to look at the word and it's not going to have a vowel and you're not going to know. So they gave you a little sign, which is the very last thing you learn. The silent vowel, which simply allows you to say la, k, m, p, sh, without uh, uh, actually attaching it to one of the proper vowels. So that's the very last thing you learn. So basically, <clears throat> what where you are now, you've learned all of your letters. Some of them have got a final form, which we'll learn next week. They look a bit different. They're not very scary. And then you've got one more vowel to learn, which is the silent vowel that simply allows you to say m p g f. And then that's it. So I would say that next week, possibly the week after, you are going to reach the end of the course in, in a sense, in, in the sense that you will be able to read everything. After that, you will still need practice and we will practice together. But that will mean that when we come to uh, Rosh Hashanah in two weeks time, actually, you will be able to read what's in the book. We'll see, we, I might ask you for an extra hour somewhere um, after next week in between the weekend or something if we haven't quite finished. But basically, 
you are just about there. Let me read you quickly uh, uh, under exercise six, line one. Gadol, hagadol, hagibor, hanora. You can read all of this. Aleinu, avinu, koleinu, imanu. Line three. Ata, echad, Moshe, zot, atora. Line four. Ki, bo, shavat, mikol, bara, latet, lo. Line five. Dor, vador. Al, kol, hachesed, asita. So you, I'm sure you're recognizing these words. They are all words in the prayer book. And actually, you can read them all. So now you can read dor vador, because you learned the resh today. Dor vador. There it is. So for homework, please, at the bottom of page four, exercise. And as much of page 55 as you can manage, lines one to 10. And seriously, people, that is almost that you are reading Hebrew. So homework, page 54 and 55. I shall send you the voice note ASAP. Next week, we'll also just go through line, oh, oh, no, page 56, just for a bit of um, consolidation. Then we'll go on to uh, lesson eight, which teaches you the final letters and the silent uh, vowel. And then from there, it is only practicing. Nothing new to recognize. Any questions or comments? Lel, I'm not here next week, but I'll give you a call. And sort of okay. see, I'm a bit lost today anyway, so I'll, I'll give you a call, but I won't be here next week. Sorry about that. All right, no, thank you. And thanks for telling me because we're sort of getting to the point where it would be good, you know, let's just do it and meet together, Harriet. That'll uh, be because lovely. now thanks. we're sort of getting to the crunch yeah, with the last couple of letters. Fantastic. Um, Lael, Anybody else? Lael, tomorrow I'll collect the book. from. from thank you for reminding me. I will drop it off uh, at Reva's office. Thanks for thank the you. reminder. Thank you. Thank you, Lael. Thanks, Lil. Harold, we Thanks, pray Lil. for your dad. We look Thanks, forward Lil. to when you're yeah. ready. Thanks so much. Lots of love. Lots of love. Cheers, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Just a quick announcement, please. Don't go there Oh, yet. sorry. Please, please. No, no. no. So yeah. just to say thank you so much, Lil, for another just incredibly delightful lesson. Yes. And what's today? Tuesday. Right, so to remind you that this Friday is a very special Kabbalah Shabbat service in memory of one of Reform Judaism's greatest rabbis. He, Dick Hirsch, is responsible for Zionism being at the heart of progressive Judaism and many other issues. And Rabbi Stanley Jacobs and an incredible Cantor Lisa Pickott will, will be conducting the, the service. So please join us. We, we'd love to have you. And if you if you knew Rabbi Dick and you want us to read out a message, we will. He did visit uh, South Africa, by the way, Lel. I saw you looked very surprised when I announced this. He, he visited in 1997. Oh, amazing. And Benny and I had sort of just been there and he came to say hello and everything. So that's well, all. So please, if you can, I think it will be something very beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lala Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.